Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I figured it's time for another check-in on my mini PC. I bought this thing sometime back. It took me around almost a year before I actually got enough guts to stop doing what I was doing with the long USB cord. But I finally did make the change back in October when the temperatures were fairly mild for that particular reason. And I thought I'd share my experience with you in terms of what I'm seeing with the PC operation in the cold weather we had during the winter and now in the summer with the hot weather. So let's get started. This plot here is from the Pegasus Astro Ultimate Power Box. It saves various plots related to power, current, etc., and also environmental sensor data, something I do like about the Ultimate Power Box. But this is a temperature reading and the dew point reading from one night in the winter when the temperature got down to a minus 5 degrees C. Now, for a lot of you, you see temperatures much lower than this. In Texas, we're not, uh, we don't have terribly cold winters. So this is about as cold as it got for me uh, on this particular night. And then in the summer, about the time I start imaging, the temperature has dropped down a bit, so it's about plus 35 degrees C, and then it drops maybe 3 to 5 degrees over the course of of the imaging session. So this is kind of the temperature range we're talking about, somewhere between minus 5 degrees and plus 35 degrees, and I'll share with you my experience on both ends of this temperature spectrum for what it's worth. Now, I have reported on some of the issues I had with the cold weather when I first encountered these problems, but I'll repeat those here and just make this a one-stop shop for thermal issues related to mini PCs. But this is an example of the test setup that I was using at the time in the winter's galaxy season, so I had my Celestron C925 out. But down here, you can see this little temperature sensor. It's just a little data logger that's hanging off the back end of the altitude adjustment bolt. I've got another one of these inside the box where the miniature PC is, and you can see here there's a little antenna here that I use to uh, get better Wi-Fi connectivity back to the house. And then I use remote desktop to tie into this computer through this antenna here. So that's the setup. I'll be measuring the air temperature here, and that's what you see over here in blue in this curve. And I'll be measuring the what I call the box temperature, which is inside the box. The sensor is adjacent to the PC and just under the USB cables that connect into the side of the mini PC. And you can see on this particular night the air temperature got down to almost minus 5 degrees here and then the box temperature was just about 1 degree C above that. The PC is generating its own heat but not a lot of it. It got fairly cold. And here are the results I had over my first five consecutive days of using this setup in cold weather. On three of the five days, I got through the imaging session without a glitch, but on two of the nights, I was finding some electrical connectivity issues, and I was getting some intermittent Wi-Fi dropouts as well. And I found out when I plotted the temperatures from those nights that anytime the temperature dropped below about one degree C, I would encounter problems. As long as the lowest temperature outside stayed above about one degree C, then everything seemed to work fine. So over that five-day period, I experienced some intermittent Wi-Fi connections and loss of other connections, for example, to the camera or to the Ultimate Power Box, and also had some green swamp server crashes as well. One of the things that I did that I think finally solved the problem, I bought a cheap heating pad and put it inside the box. So the box is sealed, the heating pad is on low, sitting on top of the mini PC. I cut a hole in the box up here so that the connector for my Wi-Fi antenna could sit down here and be in a fairly warm space. And when I did that, I found out I could get a delta T between the cold air outside, got down to minus 5 degrees here, and kept the air temperature inside the box a nice warm 16 or 17 degrees C. So it actually proved to be a very effective solution and doesn't overheat the PC and found this uh, arrangement to work very well for the remainder of the winter. The Green Swamp server crash has proved to be something else entirely. One of the problems I was finding is in using Green Swamp Server, it has this 3D display of the telescope which moves in real-time basis with the telescope. It's really cool. I do like it and it gives you an instant, at an instant glance you can tell if your telescope is doing what you think it should be doing. But what I was finding is that I would get crashes from time to time. So when I started getting these crashes, I raised this issue with Rob Morgan, the developer of GSS, and he suggested I go to one of the menus and check out what the render capability of my PC was, and it came out as a render capability of zero, which means there's no graphics processor. It's just using the CPU to do all of the rendering that you see here in this 3D image of the telescope. And while I do like the 3D image of the telescope, I don't really need it that bad if I've got to suffer through some crashes with GSS. There is an option to simply disable this 3D image and go to a static image, and that worked fine, and I had no problems with GSS after that. Now, since then, Colin Skyers, one 
of the viewers of this channel was also experiencing similar problems and did a very clever thing in tracking down what the real problem is. He, he found out that remote desktop does not make use of the graphics processor on board the computer. It just creates its own image of the screen and memory and forces the main CPU of the mini PC to produce all the graphics and that was overpowering this poor mini PC's CPU. Team Viewer does not seem to work this way. One option may be simply to go to Team Viewer. One of the tests that Colin had me run was to plug my monitor and keyboard directly into my mini PC rather than connect to it through remote desktop. And sure enough, when I did that, I found the render capability was up to a two, which is what my laptop is. It's not a Green Swamp server issue so much as it is a remote desktop issue and the way that it operates and reproduces the screen that the mini PC is generating. Colin sent his findings on to Rob so that Rob could convey that to GSS users and hopefully we can get around having these crashes. But in the meantime, Rob was very nice and came up with this alternate package, this gauge package. Instead of showing a 3D rendered version of the telescope, we now have a set of gauges we can look at. And yes, while you have the as and alt uh, numbers up here, it is really helpful, for me anyway, to have this gauge package to look at. Because I can just glance at this and see, yes, I am looking up about 58 degrees above the horizon. And yes, I am looking to the northwest. So having this gauge is, is almost as good as the 3D rendering. Big thanks to Rob for coming up with this alternate low graphics demand way of representing how the telescope is pointed. And obviously a big thank you to Colin for tracking this fundamental problem down with remote desktop. Okay, so let's move on to the hot days that we've been having here over the past month and a half or so. I've been getting a lot of imaging done. The skies have cleared up so that I've, getting, I've gotten a number of consecutive days, but they've all been under hot weather. And one of the first things I did is instead of sealing the box, I put it askew so that there could be some, some of the hot air being generated inside the box could escape and possibly uh, channel in some airflow through the box and out. And then when I did that, I found that my inside box temperature is about three degrees C higher than my air temperature. So the air temperature is being measured out here. The box temperature is being measured right under and adjacent to the mini PC here. So the next night I tried a different approach. I put the PC on one of its smaller edges so I could expose uh, more of the surface area of the mini PC to air. I took the lid completely off so that it was completely exposed to nighttime air. And I managed to bring the Delta T down by one whole degree. Once again, I'm getting through these imaging sessions with no issues, so that's still a good news thing. I wanted to see what a fan could do. So on the third night, I tried putting in a fan. In this case, it's a USB powered fan. However, I'm not having the PC power the fan. I have a little AC DC adapter that's plugged into the AC power here and it managed to bring me down to one degree C so a bit of a slight improvement um, in the end I've decided to go back to the fully open box rather than the open box with the fan it's just less gadgets I have to worry about connecting up and turning on so I've been imaging now for about 10 months and everything is going pretty well had some initial setbacks when I first encountered winter for the first time but uh, by and large, I've been using remote desktop to successfully access the mini PC next to the telescope. And I was really concerned about the hot nights, only to find out that it was a cold nights that actually gave me uh, more of a problem than the hot nights. I've been running imaging sessions so far between minus 5 degrees C and plus 35 degrees C. I don't see it getting much colder than that or much hotter than that. Texas is not a cold winter state, but it is... Uh, pretty hot for a long period of time during the summer period. I did have some cold weather related issues when the air temperature drops below about one degree C, but I found that placing an inexpensive heating pad inside the box and closing down the box keeps the PC warm and it keeps the connectors warm, so I really haven't had any uh, connectivity issues or Wi-Fi connectivity issues, and I haven't had any crashes with the systems whenever I use the heating pad inside the box. I was also experiencing some green swap server crashes as we discussed, but that proved to be associated with the way remote desktop works and the way it uses the mini PC to reproduce the screen for the uh, remote PC that you're using to access the mini PC. TeamViewer apparently does not have that same quirk and 
makes use of the graphics processor on board the mini PC. Or alternatively, you can do what I'm doing and use the new Alt As Gauge package that Rob has put into GSS. I find that to work very well for what I'm looking for. I just want a quick glance and see how the telescope, see where the telescope is pointing, and that gauge package that Rob put in does that perfectly. Well, I've been operating now for about 21 days in hot weather, and by that I mean it's hotter than 30 degrees C when I start my imaging runs, and there haven't been any interruptions, no issues at all. Uh, there is a modest improvement uh, in the delta T between the outside air and what's going on next to the PC if I use a fan, but I only get about a one degree C improvement, so I haven't been doing that. Now, one thing to keep in mind, some of these mini PCs that are out on the market don't have a fan. My PC does have a fan, and maybe that's helping out here. So that's something for you to think about if you live in a hot weather climate. Maybe if a mini PC with a fan, an internal fan, is an advantage in this particular case. My plan going forward is that whenever I expect the coldest temperature during an imaging session to drop below positive 10 degrees C, I'm just going to seal the box and put the heating pad in the box. When I expect the outside air temperature to be hotter than plus 25 C, then I'm going to open the box. And for anything in between, I'll just use the sealed box with no heating pad. So that's all I have for right now, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to leave you with my latest cloud cam video as I was doing some imaging last night on SH2-115. Enjoy. See you next time.